What's going on guys? Hit pause here with a relatively quick tutorial. I always gonna preface it that way because I never really know how long this is gonna take but I am anticipating this one being short. Um, the idea is I want to go over dispatchers. Uh, I have a first person template running in the engine 4.7.4 uh, here. Um, this is a pretty empty project. If I look at the um, the level blueprint here, there's nothing here. So um, the idea is, okay, so dispatchers, it's like why the, why, why would you really want to use one of those? Well, the, the main reason is, in my case anyway, and I know, I know there's other uses for it, but my, the main reason I use it is whenever I need a blueprint in my game to talk to the level blueprint. So I need the level blueprint to know that something has happened in another blueprint for whatever reason, right? Um, it's the main reason. Most other blueprints can find each other, can get all actors of class, can do stuff like that, and, and so can level blueprint. There, there's, I, I believe that dispatchers can be bypassed entirely um, in other ways, but they are a kind of a convenience. So I'm just going to show you how they're called and um, basically kind of run through it really quick. So what we're going to do is we need a function to happen on the level blueprint based on a key press on the dude. That's how we're going to do it, okay? So basically we need a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom event. And by function I mean custom event. Um, I know there are functions and I'm making a custom event. Just oh, Sorry, I was talking about custom events. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to call this custom function we're going to print custom function fired. That's the result that we want. Okay? So on begin play, begin play you, uh, just to test it out, we'll run like a three second delay and then we will run. Um, well, I don't want to call this custom function, do I? I want to call this my function <laughs> or that uh, we'll, we'll say my custom function okay because it's normally it's called custom event so when that's done we're gonna say my custom function so that's as pretty much as simple as it gets this is akin to hello world so three seconds into the game it's gonna print this so there's a small chance that my printing is not working Custom function fired. You can see it up in the corner, and I even misspelled it. So that's awesome. I said custom, custom function. It's my custom. So we're gonna, we want this to fire when we press a button on the player. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing that you could do, um, if we go to the player first person character here, we'll open him up. Now he's default, so it, it comes with this stuff, right? I'm not doing anything weird here. Um, Default, I, I could always say, hey, you know, let's, well, let's, let's make an input really quick. So we'll go to project settings, input, and let's do an action mapping. Okay, so a button that we can press to test it. So we'll, we'll do plus, and we'll say, um, test me, something like that. And we'll pick, like, the V key. Okay. So you hit V, it's going to fire. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna try to do the axis command test me and you can immediately type that in say test me pressed uh, we'll print the screen and we'll say button pressed V like so and we'll compile that so I hit V button press V come but comes up and you can see custom function fired at the top so took completely separately now the without a dispatcher, the way that you would probably want to get this to work would be um, on begin play, get player character, uh, we can do that right here, get player character, okay, and then we could give the player character a variable that said true or false, so when you pressed it, V was pressed, when you release it, V was released, this thing checks on tick if that was done, and it's a, it's a constant, constant running of a function to determine whether or not we've pressed that button, which is too simple of a thing to be ticking. It's there's no need for that. So in this case, we're gonna do the dispatcher. So it's a little weird, 
Um, but if you follow these rules, you should be fine. Uh, so what we're going to do is, we'll leave this for now. So when we press this, what we're going to do, the, when you create a dispatcher, you want to create the dispatcher in the class that you're trying to basically listen to. Like, hey, this is the player character. I'm waiting for him to press the button. So we're going to put the dispatcher in his blueprint, okay? So what we do is we create add new event dispatcher. Okay, that comes up here, and we're going to call this. We're going to call this my event dispatch. Okay, so what we do is we just bring this out and we say call. So when I press the button, I'm going to call this. Okay, and I'm going to make the, I'm going to print my own thing. That's all we do. Then we hit compile. Now, here's the thing. Once that happens, we can officially read that from over here. However, there's a caveat. You got to remember, if I try to say mind event, to my, there's nothing there. We actually have to get a handle on the item that we're trying to dick with, okay, that we're looking at. So in this case, I do need to get the player character. I need to cast him to the first person character, so whatever he is. Okay, in this case, I'll run it a pure cast. Okay, now once that happens, now bind event to my there it is bind event to my dispatch okay so you, it's just like it's it's not gonna the level blueprint will not know that this exists unless it knows that the character unless it's got a handle on the character okay meaning that we've cast to it that's a very important part of this thing this okay before this so all we do is we run this here and we tell it what he meant. And that's it. So what happens now is we bound the event to my event dispatch. Whenever now it knows that this is here, whenever this runs, whenever this is called, it will call this. Okay? And this will run the print screen. Okay? So the event begin play is literally doing nothing but running straight to bind the event. So we compile that and we hit play. Now when I hit V, it's both of them. Okay, custom function fired and button pressed V. Okay, every time you see nothing there now, and I hit V, two, two calls. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, like I said, the main important thing is you need to get a handle on it. The second main important thing is to remember that it's kind of weird because you can add a dispatcher here in the level blueprint. Um, and then, but then something else would have to be bound to that, and I don't know how to do it in reverse that way. I only know how to do it this way. Okay, so this is the key right here. Make sure it gets bound somewhere on level begin play, or it doesn't necessarily have to be begin play. But if it's not on begin play, it had better be before guaranteed before this can can ever be called. Okay this needs to make sure this is on begin play this will happen before I even get a chance to start inputting anything um, but if it doesn't if this was to happen on another function that you just gotta make sure that that function is gonna definitely already have been ran before this okay that's important otherwise you'll get an error um, because I don't know what happens if you if I try to say hey you know call this event and I had done this on say hey on you know something silly you know on my something silly function it wouldn't work so that's how you do it and use case scenarios it's kinda hard to determine um, you may want to say um, hey you know the player just pressed the the wait button right which means I'm running a day night cycle I'm using matinee for my day night cycle so most of the controls for my day night cycle are in the level blueprint of my map it's what's calling matinee it's what's changing variables and stuff like that but I'm playing my day-night cycle at a, like a very slow speed, 0.01, and when the player hits the button, hits the hits the button, I want them to be able to speed that up until it hits the transition. So it's kind of like Skyrim, where you can say, "Hey, wait, wait an hour, wait two hours, wait three hours, or wait until night change, or something like that." Um, in that case, the only way that you would be able to access that again 
would be through a dispatcher, or you would have to constantly try to get a read on that guy's variable to see whether or not you've been pressed, and that's not good. This is a cool thing because this is essentially now like a listening event. This is looking out for that. So whenever this function gets called on this, gets called from this character, it will propagate here every single time. And it will not have any overhead if you're not pressing the button or anything like that. It's not going to sit here. This this got ran in the beginning. It's ready. It's good to go. Uh, it's a very awesome feature to be able to use, but like I said, I can't think of a million or a billion reasons to use it, but I can think of maybe a million, <laughs> if, if that makes any sense, right? Can't do a billion, but I can think of a million, you know? Uh, there is a limit to what you can do with it, but there's also kind of no limits. So that's it. Hopefully you guys found that useful. Again, just if I demo it, I hit the button, I run two functions now. Okay, I run the one on the level of it, uh, level blueprint, and I run the one that is on my character. So my character says I pressed V, and the level event says I custom function was fired. And as long as I see both of those, I know it's working, and I can do whatever I want now. Okay. So that's hip pause signing off. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully you guys found that useful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any, or if you're having any trouble with anything, feel free to send in a suggestion for a tutorial, and I will see about the topic. And and uh, ma the main reason I wouldn't do something that you suggest uh, would be because I don't know enough about it that I would probably steer people in the wrong direction. Um, and that's the only reason I uh, avoid subjects is whether or not I. I feel like uh, like I'm actually explaining it correctly, you know. If I can't do that, there's no point in me doing it. So, uh, in this case, uh, we should be fine. So, thanks for watching, guys, and hit pause. Signing off.